Hello, everyone. Thank you for coming. Uh, and we are very excited to share our research at DAVCA. Our presentation today is to talk about the security of smart speakers. We found and exploited some vulnerabilities to attack some smart speakers, such as Xiaomi AI speaker and Amazon Echo. First, please let me introduce my teammate and myself. Ni Yuxian is a security researcher at Tencent Blade team. He has found several vulnerabilities in Android, and he was the speaker of Hagen Boss, and he worked with us to complete all the work of whole study. Unfortunately, he is not homework today. And uh, this is my teammate Chen Wenxian. He is also a security researcher from Tencent Blade team, and he is on top 100 white hat list of MSRC. And he wrote a book called named What I Had to Talk About the Web Browser Security. And my name is Wu Hui Yu, and you, and you can communicate. I'm a security researcher at Tencent Blade Team, and also a bug hunter, winner of GeekPam, and the speaker of Hagrid in the Box and POC. And here we would like to thank some people, especially Nag2 and Gmail XP, they gave us a lot of support. Next, let me introduce the Tencent Blade team. Our team comes from Tencent Security Platform Department. Now, we are focusing on the security research of AI, IoT devices, mobile devices. In the past two years, we have found more than 17 security vulnerabilities for many companies, such as Google and Apple. And you can contact us at blade.tencent.com. Before we start our presentation, let's take a brief look at the outline. First, we will give an introduction to smart speaker, and then we will talk about the attack surface of smart speakers. Then we will share the details of remote attack Xiaomi AI speaker and how to break in Amazon Echo. At last, we will summarize our research. Smart speakers is the most popular smart home devices in the past two years. Amazon, Google, Apple, and some Chinese vendors have released their own smart speaker products. The Amazon Echo family is the most popular smart speaker on the market. It has more than 30 million users, and many people are very interested are uh, very interested in its security, so we choose its uh, our research target. Another research target is Xiaomi AI speaker. Xiaomi AI speaker is very popular in China because it can control many smart devices in Xiaomi ecosystems. Next, mm, let's briefly analyze the attack surface of the smart speaker. In smart speaker architecture, it mainly includes three parts. Uh, the, per the first part is smart speaker device, the second is the cloud server, and the last is mobile phone application. The attack surface of this architecture contains, contains many parts. The first part is the hardware interface and the network walls uh, of the sm speaker device. The second part is the security of the mobile phone application. The third part is the security of the cloud server, and the last part is the security of the communication protocol between them. Then uh, I will talk about how we can explore multi-temper vulnerabilities to remote attack Xiaomi Air speaker. Uh, these include the five parts. Xiaomi AI speaker had a built-in system based on OpenWRT. Uh, it it uh, SH service was disabled, and the firmware of the speaker can be downloaded easily by a HTTP request. But we cannot replace the firmware with many in the media attacks because of uh, its security mechanism. In addition, it opens up some network ports and uh, the 54321 is the communication port of the MIOS protocol. 
MIAO protocol is used to configure and control smart home devices made by Xiaomi. It is an encrypted binary protocol. After analyzing the firmware of Xiaomi S speaker, we found that the data included in the MIAO packet was passed into UBUS commanders and executed by Xiaomi S speaker with root permission. So, if we can simulate a Xiaomi smart device to communicate with the Xiaomi S speaker, we can use this protocol to execute a root commander, which is a root commander execution vulnerability in 9. In order to explore this vulnerability, we first need to establish a collection with the speaker and pass the authentication of MIAO protocol. This will require us to obtain an AS key for connection. We call this key as a token. This token is 16 beta string to get this token. We need to use the Mi Home application to rebind the speaker to a tag the ARM account. Then extract the token from uh, the application's database. We found a web interface authority vulnerability. So we can only need to get the device ID to, um, to unbind any speaker device. And we found the device ID can be obtained by sniffing in the line. After got the token, we can use some tools to connect the Xiaomi AI speaker by pro MIO protocol. Then we can send some UBUS commanders to the speaker. The first commander is used to modify the drop beer configure fare, and the second commander is to turn off the drop beer pass password authentication. Finally, we need to start the drop beer. After executed these UBUS commanders, we can successfully to access the SSH of MIAI speaker and log in without passwords. And it means we have obtained the root permission of the speaker. In addition, we found another vulnerability in a program called Message Agent which is used to MQTT communication between the speaker and the cloud servers. When a user controls some the speaker's function in a mobile phone, the application communicates with the cloud server first. Then the cloud server sends the device ID and the command to the message agent. Then the message agent will execute the command. We found two special web interfaces. One is remote UBUS, which uh, can call the UBUS service remotely, and the other is UBA remote OTA. The, the commander sent by calling this interface will be executed using the system function, so which is a remote system com commander execution vulnerability. There are two pieces of the vulnerability code that are analyzed in the, using ADA Pro. One that finally calls the UBUS service, and the second finally invokes the system function. Since these two vulnerable web interfaces have identity authentication, if we want to explore this vulnerable remotely, uh, we have to get the user's cookie for the speaking binding. In the net research, we found two XS vulnerabilities in account.xiaomi.com, which allow us to remotely steal a large number of uh, MIA speaker users' cookies. So now we, we can explore these vulnerabilities to complete the attack chain of remotely obtaining the root permission of a MIA speaker. Now, let's take a brief look at the first demo radio. This radio demonstrated the two vulnerabilities we mentioned. The first part of the radio demonstrated the connecting the, to the speaker via SSH in the line and control it play a piece of audio. Huh. 
一杯黑喽。呃、uh, ，because this Xiaomi AI speaker doesn't speak English, so we control it through a Chinese mini winner winner chicken dealer. In the second video, the victim's small speaker is remotely controlled by the attack after cleaning the URL. Okay, now we will finish the section on Xiaomi AI speaker. Let's talk about how to break in Amazon Echo. These include six parts, and then we are quickly talk about the previous four parts and the explore detail and the demo video will be shared by my teammates. First, let's have a brief look at let's have a brief look at the Amazon Echo. In the newly released second generation Echo family, all of the Amazon Echo devices use similar hardware and systems. So we choose the Echo Dot as our test devices. Amazon Echo Dot has built in Fire OS, which is actually a system based on Android. It turns on AC Unix and ASIR, locks the bootloader, and it has a USB interface, but can only be used for charging. We also found some network ports by scanning. At the beginning, we tried to get the firmware for a long time, but we got nothing. So we chose to start with the hardware and extract the firmware directly from the flash chip. In order to extract the firmware from the flash chip, we need to pre prepare a lot of hardware tools, which include the hardware gun, soldering, error, reporting tools, and so on. Okay, this is the second demo video. This video shows how to disorder the chip from the PCB in six minutes and then reborning the chip. Uh, to save time, we doubled the video speed. The most important skill is to choose a suitable temperature and be careful. Okay. When we disorder the uh, disorder and reborn in the trip, we need to choose a suitable 
chip adapter according to the chip data sheet. Amazon Echo uses the BGA221 package EMCP chip, which we can easily buy an adapter on Taobao or eBay. And we also can buy a universal EMMC reader and connect the adapter to the USB reader device so that we can read and write the firmware content in the EMCP chip easily. And this is the disk um, partition information we extracted from the flash chip. It contains many parts such as preloader, button loader, boot image, system, and so on. When we got the firmware, we had another important thing to do. That is to modify the firmware to create an uh, Amazon Echo Dot with root permission. This can help us quickly debug some vulnerabilities. Because Amazon Echo Dot turned on SE Unix and locked the button loader, we cannot directly modify the button image to achieve root. We need to close SE Unix and then add the super user binary file to the system and start. And then we need to open the system ADB function. We add these operations to a shell script that start automatic turning so that every time the system boots, it can make sure we can collect the echo data from its USB interface and get the root permission. After complete this, oh, okay, sorry. And this is the third demo video to show how to solder in the chip. After completing this uh, modification, we need to resolder the flash chip back to the PCB. This video demonstrates how to resolder the chip back to the PCB in three minutes. And to save time, we also double the video speed. Okay. Uh, before we complete these operations, we have got a um, rooted echo dot. And okay, my part is over. Uh, thank you for listening. Now, please welcome my teammate, Chen Wenxiang. Okay, uh, hello everyone. Uh, now I'm going to give a talk about how to turn Amazon Echo to an eavesdropping device on the basis of software. Uh, earlier, my partner has given a great talk about how to uh, hack into the Echo device on the basis of hardware. The physical hack is very important. Without that, exploiting will be much difficult for me. So how many steps would it take to hack into a device? The first attacker exploits it, and then the victim connects to the hacker, and next the hacker do whatever he or she wants to do. Yes, the step is simple, but on a well-protected system, things will get a little complicated. Since we already got the firmware and debug environment, we are able to check the restrictions that Amazon has set up for us. So first, please allow me to introduce the uh, protections we need to bypass first. There are three firewalls uh, or firewall-like things. The system uses IP tables to allow only a few ports from accepting connections, and the, uh, the SE Linux is also enabled. We managed to find a binary with high privileges to bypass it. This binary is a vulnerable program uh, shown in the picture and it has a web server activated. To communicate with it, we must pass a client authenticated TLS handshake, 
That means we must get the certificates and other things. But those certs are obtained from the cloud synchronizing. In other words, we need to get the cloud synchronizing information of other devices. So attacker is always happy to see there's a web server available. That explains why we choose this binary to be our target. In the next few slides, please allow me to introduce some background information so we can go through these things more clearly. The word WHAD, which is a whole home audio daemon, it is a huge binary runs as a root and with network access and is able to record voice. Also, the most excited part is it would open a web server. The HTTPS server runs on port 55443 and it accepts control commands. But uh, things are not going as we wish it to be. The HTTPS server introduced client authenticated TLS handshake. Uh, that means we must have a cert server certificate, a uh, client certificate, and a private key to communicate with it. Does this sound difficult? But we have also noticed that the physically rooted device uh, can also pass a check and communicate with other devices. So the information must be stored in somewhere. By reading the document of LiveCurl, we know we can extract all certificates and private key from LiveCurl's negotiate function on rooted device. To do the trick, the first thing we need to do is to bind our rooted device into victim's account. I'll explain this why, uh, why, why we do this later. By auditing Amazon's website, we have found two XSS, and both need two steps of user's action, so we decide not using them. But the XSS here is fatal. You can steal privacy or control the device with a cookie obtained from XSS, because Alexa dashboard is a lack of modern protections, such as CSP, which is a content security policy, and HTTP only protects. Yes, by using the XSS, you can get the same result of what we will talk later, but we also found another method which is the quickest and easiest way for us. That is to spoof an Amazon website. We have found that every time when we log into the Alexa, there's an OpenID login page, and there's also a redirect parameter in the URL. By modifying that parameter, it will redirect to any domain which is a subdomain of Amazon.com in HTTPS. Since we want to mimic an Amazon's website, so we don't want to mess up with the HTTPS certificate, so we'd like to have an HTTPS downgrade redirect. And luckily, we have found the site associated redirect.amazon.com. Its validating rule allows to downgrade to HTTP. It also has some vulnerabilities that could, re, uh, that could be redirect to other sites which is not belongs to Amazon and leaking some token from OpenID. But now the only thing we need is the downgrade. Okay, we want to spoof Amazon's website inside victim's LAN, but there are two preconditions. The first one is the attacker needs to be joined uh, the victim's LAN, and the second is we need to find an Amazon domain which resolves to a local address. An attacker can be joined into the LAN with that IP address. And both are not hard to be satisfied. You can get a list of subdomains from Google Transparency Report. Then you can disable DHCP to use a static IP address to join to the LAN. Uh, we have found the app service which resolves to a local address. If attacker could join the LAN of victim with that address, then start a web server. When victim tries to visit appservice.amazon.com in his or her browser, actually the victim victim is visiting the hacker's website. Also, because it has a root domain of Amazon.com, the cookie will be sent to the attacker automatically from the browser. To sum up, uh, first, the attacker joins the LAN 
And when victim logging from the Alexa login page with the redirect parameter set to associate redirect.amazon.com, and when victim finish the logging, the page will redirect to associate redirect.amazon.com. Then this site will downgrade and redirect to appservice.amazon.com. This domain resolves to attacker's computer and the user will finally visit the attacker's website with a cookie sent to it. Then the attacker bind his device into victim's account using the cookie. And finally, we can communicate with other devices of victim. And the first problem is solved. We have got a device could pass the first check. Then we will use that device to extract certificates and private keys from negotiate function. But first, I'd like to show you a simple picture about the architecture, which shows how Word gets the device info when it starts and why we need to bind it, bind it into victim's account first. Uh, if you have many devices in your account, they will group as a cluster automatically. When Alexa D starts, it will obtain information from Amazon server, and when Word starts, it will get those information from Alexa D. And when a device wants to update something, the Alexa D will notify the Amazon server, and the server will later notify all other devices in that cluster to synchronize. Because the key will change when Word starts, to automate the exploiting later, we choose to patch the word. The word will per periodically send an HTTPS request to other devices to know if they are still online. By replacing the negotiate function to the assembly code written by us, we can dump the certificates to a local file. It is simple and violent, but anyhow it works. So we don't need to crack the complex algorithm. Since everything is taking place on attacker's device, uh, to simplify the environment, we have disabled all protections on the physically hacked device. The code is a little complicated, so we are not going to talk about this now. You may check our GitHub page to get the full code in assembly. So in another word, we try to dump those things to three files and use them later in the attack. Now we have dealt with the client authenticate function, uh, authentication problem. Every time before we want to perform an attack, we run the patched word to get the certs and private key. Then we can go to the last step to break the vulnerable program word on victim's device. Since we are going to attack it, there must be vulnerabilities to be exploited. So let's back to the binary auditing. So we have audited almost every binaries, and we found the binary written by Amazon themselves are secured by design. But we have also noticed that Echo is using the very old version of the third-party libraries. They are all nearly four years old. You can see the uh, you can see the picture. It shows they are using some code of year 2014. So also Amazon tries to apply security patches to them. There are still many end days and zero day vulnerabilities. They are gold mine. Okay, it's time to dig the gold. That is to attack the web server and get control of what. And how the feeling for you to audit some code written from four years ago? Maybe a little relaxed, I guess. Because old code with poor test often leads to serious problems. It took me a week to find the treasure, but when we first find the exploitable function, nobody in Word calls it. Luckily, Amazon updated the binary two months later, and we have found that a lot of functions are referencing this function. The root cause of the vulnerability is the library has, final, has fa failed a condition check and thus, a lot of vulnerabilities happen in sequence. Let's take a look at the questionable code. First, you can see the content length is a user's polite code, and CVT Web tries to get the value from HTTP header and convert it into an integer. The ATOI accepts negative numbers as input and will return a signed integer. 
What I don't quite understand is why they convert the value from signed integer to unsigned here. If the variant is unsigned, the code if content length is greater than zero is actually uh, equals to if content length is not zero. So maybe the unsigned here is a typo. And next, uh, the if check negative one equals to the biggest number of unsigned int, so we will also pass the check. And then the number plus one is again an integer overflow. The result is zero. Uh, malloc zero is valid because echo system is using DL malloc as a, as a malloc algorithm. As the menu says, even input is zero, it can still allocate a small buffer for you to write in. Next, in the MG read call, there's a heap buffer overflow. We'll talk about this soon. And there's a minor one, the post data bracket content length assigned to zero will write zero at negative one position. Leaves the string not zero terminated. That is a potential information leak because this, inf this function is used to get the parameter's value. So it's just like the chess, a bad move might lead to a total lose. Okay, let's back to the heap buffer overflow. The doglias malloc, DL malloc zero, will allocate 16 bytes. That means eight bytes of a metadata plus eight bytes buffer, where we can write our data to. In the MG read, data read from HTTP request is written into buffer. The good thing is this function will fix the input length, so if you are giving the huge number as we did, it will fix that length to real data length remains in the socket buffer. <laughs> then it will copy the data from socket to M locked buffer. So if we try to post a string longer than eight bytes, there will be a heap buffer overflow. So do you remember the size of M lock is controlled by user? We can send content length to control it. If we don't send the full HTTP request, by omitting the terminating uh, return carriage and new line, the malloc T buffer will remain in the memory without being freed. When we need to free the buffer, we could simply send the remaining return carriage and new line. Then the connection is closed and the buffer is freed. By the way, the MG read will write anything including zero charts to buffer, so it is very convenient for us to exploit. Since we can control the content of heap, one thing we wanted most is a vulnerability to bypass ASLR. That would be good for us to do the heap buffer overwrite and heap spray later. First, let's talk about the heap, re heap spray part. If we want to exploit it, we must try to control area to put our shellcode in. The anonymous memory is a good place. Large heap allocation requests cause the mlock to use mmap an anonymous memory. It is controlled by the mmap threshold variant of the mlock. Although there's a hundred of threads running in the background, there's only we want to allocate such huge memory. Because the algorithm of the mmap, the, the address is started from a predictable range even when SLR is enabled. You may check the article in our reference in the last page of these slides to know the detail. In our case, we have got an address that has a good chance to be allocated. We have got this value by just run the program again and again, and it is an exper experience value. So after we, ha <coughs> we have got a buffer to put our shellcode, we may also need an information leak to do the rest of things. The IoT device is different from the desktop applications. There's no screen for us to know the results. So if the leaked data is sent to us through the network, that will be great. Finally, an information leak of libcurl in FTP connection is proved to be exploitable. By the way, this is an NJ vulnerability. So libcurl don't give the POC, but we try to reproduce this problem from live curls patch and test cases. We see to trigger this vulnerability, we need to reuse a curl handle. That means we need to use same handle to connect to the same FTP server, not less than twice. Okay, let's back to the program logic of what. 
we have found a control command. Uh, its name is download audio. Normally, it would download only a single file, and the call handle is closed. But we have dug into the code deeper and found that if the extension is PLS, it will parse the PLS file and use the same curl object to download every file in it. And from the second connection, curl will, re will reuse the FTP handle and trigger the vulnerability. The picture shows the detail of the file. We use PHP redirect to bypass the protocol restriction of what. Also, if the PLS downloaded successfully, what will use the catch and will not accept the same request twice. That means if curl's FTP function fails to leak any bytes, unless it is restarted, what will not accept our download request again, and we don't want to see this happen, so we check the code branch and found if one of the URL points to a file that doesn't exist, there'll be no catch. So we can send the same request as many times as we want till we leak an address. We use a Python script to automatically adjust the payload, and finally we have found uh, the size 103 will reuse a freed heap area, which contains an address, point to a function of curl. And based on this address, we can calculate the loading address of curl, and furthermore, address of every libraries. Because the ld.so will load dt needed libraries in sequence, so you can simply calculate the next or previous library's address by plus or minus the length of adjacent SO library. So we have everything we need, so how do we execute the code? The web server is powered by OpenSSL. An SSL object is created when a request is coming. So if you happen to read the source code, you will find there are many function pointers in that object. When LibCVT Web wants to respond something to the client, SSL write is called. So all we need to do is to overwrite the SSL write pointer. And to simplify, we have found a fast way to trigger SSL write. It was send more form HTTP version. Well, this is a code in the older version of LibCVT Web. This code only works safely in Linux. You may try what will happen if you compile it in Visual Studio. In summary, we have got six attacking primitives. The first one is to restart the world, so we can cause, uh, we can cause an exception in world in case we can't le leak the address or stuck for a long time. We may want to restart the program and give it another try. And other five primitives are also listed here. So now all we need to do is to compile them to get a remote code execution. So now it's time to pong. I have to say it has a possibility to fail because the background threads are messing up the heap. And another reason is in the last step, the memory condition is a little like to fall into a risk condition problem. We have a connection to overwrite the SSL object of another connection. If anything of the thread be written is called before the overwritten is, uh, is done, it will fail. Or if any background thread calls the zigzag V, that's a fail too. For a four bytes testing gadget, we have 14% chance to set the PC value to it. But the real life gadget is six times longer and the success rate is down to about 8%. But the good news is uh, what will respond af after, it, after it will, sorry. <laughs> Uh, the good news is the word will be respond after crash automatically, so we can do the exploit again and again. That, that is to entrust, entrust the hack to time. The average success time is about 30 minutes in our laboratory with about 10 tries. If we can control the PC, we need the last thing to start the evil dropping. That means a shell code. We use function offset from library plus leaked library's load address to get the function address in memory. We added two handler for sigsegv and sigabort, 
with infinite loop in our shell code to prevent any background threats from crashing the process. We have also now the length of metadata of the memory page where shell codes are placed to prevent this page from being freed. We try to use the class audio recorder to record the voice and send it by TCP to attacker. And the voice is recorded in PCM format. And the shell code could be found in our GitHub page too. And finally, you can see we have dealt with every problem. What is now turning into an uh, eavesdropping program? Is uh, eavesdropping in the background and sending every voice data to the attacker? Do you want to watch the video? Of course, we have prepared a demo video which shows the whole story. Yeah, this is a normal echo dot. And the left part is a attacker server, and the right part is the exploiting script. When the exploit success, the victim will connect to us, and you can see the log is shown on the left. So you don't need to worry about this. The vulnerabilities we have found have all reported to the developers and fixed in the June 2018. Amazon has already automatically updated Echo devices with security patches, and the vulnerabilities we have mentioned are already all fixed. And you can find the code and the contact information on our GitHub page. And last, a little hack tips from our experience. The first, to hack an IoT device, you need to get the firmware first. And it's a, it, it is good to master all kinds of soldering and firmware extraction methods. And web plus binary vulnerabilities often equals to remote code execution. And the most important thing is to be patient. Your hard work will finally pay off. And uh, so thank you for listening, and thanks my partner too. If you have any 